What's going on, Browns fans? Welcome into the Cleveland Browns Report by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Matthew Peterson. And on today's show, we're going to check out five rookies to watch for at minicamp for the Browns. That way, when training camp rolls around, you can kind of get a sense of maybe who's ahead of the curve. So let's get the facts out quickly. Minicamp is May 13th to the 15th for the Browns, which I like three days. Some teams like the team in Southern Ohio thinks they only need one day to look at their rookies. No, let's get them in there. Let's get a good workout in. Let's get a good sense of this rookie class. So let's remind everyone of the NFL draft picks the Browns made. We'll just run through these names really quickly because let's face it. I just love looking at the picks Andrew Barry made and thinking Pro Bowl, All-Star, Pro Bowl, Pro Bowl, you know, Hall of Famer. All pro, whatever it may be. So moving on to some other day three picks here. Jerome Ford will be an interesting name. Two guys out of Oklahoma because Andrew Barry could not pass up on the opportunity to troll everyone down in Norman to make them watch more Browns football after their beloved Baker is no more in Cleveland. So those are the Browns' nine draft picks from 2022. We'll get to UDFAs a little later on, but which rookie will have the best season for the Browns? You think it's going to be the first name picked off the board, Martin Emerson? Or you want to go a little more outside the box, right? Someone like Perion Winfrey. That's a popular name. A David Bell. Or you could go, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll keep it a surprise. So let me know which rookie you think will have the best season down below in the comment section. My top five rookies to watch for at minicamp. Number five, Isaiah Weston, the wide receiver out of Northern Iowa, who is not drafted by the Browns. Nope, that's a UDFA signing who had an awesome career at Northern Iowa. In fact, if you were to compare his stats to a lot of other players who were drafted, he would outnumber them. Now, I understand when you play at Northern Iowa, you don't go up against SEC DBs. But regardless, this guy, if you just watch the tape and you're like, I know he went to a small college, but if you can get over that mental hurdle, you could really see him being a player who can make this roster. And as a UDFA, you can't ask for much more. Especially when you think about how the Browns' wide receiver room is far from being set in stone. When I'm looking at rookie minicamp, I'm looking at players at positions that have an opportunity to move up vertically. So you look at the wide receiver room in Cleveland, and it doesn't have a ton of concrete names. Players that couldn't be moved from their spot. It's up for grabs really after Amari Cooper. My next rookie to keep an eye on is Martin Emerson, the corner from Mississippi State. This was the first selection for the Browns. So, yeah, you would think this would be a guy to watch for. Now, the DB room, the cornerback specifically, is a bit of a head-scratcher. I was trying to think of who's going to be the starting slot corner. I think it's to be determined. Maybe, you know, that's uh, a little weak on my end, cowardish, but I really couldn't think of a guaranteed spot uh, put name to put there for the slot. I think it's going to be more of a rotation of JOK, Delpit, Newsom to get Williams and Emerson on the field. I, I think Joe Woods is going to do everything he can to maximize his star players being on the field at the same time. So for now, I've got a question mark for that slots position, but maybe Emerson can make enough room to move Greg Newsom over and Emerson or Williams takes over CB2. You see what I'm saying here? Ultimately, Martin Emerson was a pick for the future. And that's fine because I had talked about it leading up to the draft how much I love taking best player available. And I know I was a bit of a hypocrite when the pick came in, but the Troy Hill trade made it a lot easier to digest. But regardless, you've got players on expiring contracts soon in Greedy Williams. You lost Troy Hill. And if you say, hey, maybe we don't need a corner more than other spots, but if we think this guy's going to be a stud, yeah, why not lock up an awesome cornerback trio between Ward, Williams, uh, sorry, Ward, Newsom, and Emerson for years to come? Ultimately, though, you want your first pick in the draft to impress during rookie minicamp. You know what I mean? This is the guy that Andrew Barry felt was the best option when he was on the clock in round three after trading back from pick 44. He wants to see him go out there and prove him right in front of Stefanski. Okay, so I think if you're Andrew Barry, you want everyone to get off your back a little bit on this pick because it didn't come without some disagreement. We'll check out two more or three more rookies to keep an eye on in just a second. But I want to tell everyone watching about what's going on over at Rumble. 
So Rumble, let's get ready to Rumble, is another up-and-coming video platform service. So if you're looking for other ways to take in your Browns content or it's news, sports, politics, whatever it may be, follow us at rumble.com slash Browns Report. We're trying to get to 2,000 subscribers, so I really appreciate everyone that's already subbed over there. But if you haven't already, use that link. It's in the comments. It's in the description. And make sure you check us out at Rumble. My next rookie to keep an eye on for is Cade York, our friend from Baton Rouge, originally from McKinney, Texas. Shout out to Trace. But Cade York, at his time in LSU, was pretty consistent, you could say. 81 field goal percentage, 57 long, three-year starter for the Tigers. And I'm all for drafting a kicker. Some say it's, a, it's better just to wait till after the draft and sign one. Listen, here's a good measuring tick, a stick I like to use. If you knew Justin Tucker would be what he is right now, where would you draft him? You could argue round one. So if you believe Cade York is that guy, then why not take him in round four? Ultimately, Andrew Barry and Kevin Stefanski, they gave this guy the keys. They opened the garage and said, enjoy the drive because we got rid of Chase McLaughlin. We gutted our kicking room for you. We believe you are the guy. We don't need to bring in competition unless you don't look good in rookie minicamp. And during OTAs. And if you don't look too solid then, because they're not going to fall on their sword for you, then maybe come August during training camp, late July, they'll try to bring in another name like they did for Parkey and McLaughlin last year. So I think there's a lot of faith in York, and he's got to prove it at this first opportunity during minicamp. Help us reach 9,000 subscribers. Hit that big red button. We are... Just under 350 subs away. So if you haven't already, make sure you join the channel because if you want free Browns news and rumors content or really anything related to your Cleveland Browns, we've got it here. Join an army of nearly 9,000 strong as we march our way there. Hit that big red button and subscribe. My next rookie to keep an eye on, David Bell, the wide receiver out of Purdue. I like this pick a lot. I've talked about him before and how... There were a lot of concerns after a very slow 40 at the combine, but ultimately, I think this guy is a good just a good football player. He helps his quarterback get first downs, he helps move the chains, he's got strong hands, he's got confident sure hands, and at the wide receiver depth chart, after Amari Cooper, nothing is a guarantee. I would say DPJ at wide receiver 2 is like 90%, but you're telling me Anthony Schwartz or David Bell can't blow the world away, and take that spot during training camp? Absolutely not. So I wouldn't be blown away if David Bell has an awesome training camp, has an awesome rookie mini camp, and moves his way up the ladder in that depth chart here. But who will be wide receiver two? Are you going to keep it with the, I guess, it's not really incumbent, but it is now, Donovan Peoples-Jones? You want to go with him? Put his jersey number 11. Or David Bell, who's got, by the way, going to be rocking number 18. You can put his jersey number down there. Or if you take the field, right? Anthony Schwartz, uh, Jakeem Grant, I don't think he will be, but you, you catch my drift. Uh, or a friend, Weston, from Northern Iowa. Let me know by putting an O for other if you think it's just going to be someone else other than those two guys. Going back to David Bell, like I was saying, what he did in West Lafayette last year, not even last year, for a handful of seasons uh, for Purdue, he was great. Nearly 3,000 yards in, I think, 29 games, 232 receptions, and 21 touchdowns. Listen, I get it. The guy didn't have an awesome 40 speed. Boo-hoo. I mean, there's a lot of people in the NFL who didn't. For example, you may think Cooper Cup had terrific blazing 40 coming out of eastern Washington I mean how else would he have gotten some notoriety no he really didn't he ran like a four five seven I think so what was that eighth one hundredths of a second off from where David Bell ran yeah I'm not too concerned about a bad day in March ruining this guy's career I love this pick especially mid to late round three I think the Browns though have a lot of faith in Deshaun Watson with these wide receivers when you didn't see Jarvis Landry return, and then we've heard, hey, they're really not interested in even signing a Will Fuller or even like a, a fun idea of a Julio Jones, this tells me, and for good reason too, by the way, Andrew Barry said, hey, Deshaun Watson, we're going to give you $230 million guaranteed. We don't need to invest all that much in the wide receiver room because we've got you, right? That's the point of getting a superstar quarterback. 
is you don't have to have blown away wide receivers. That doesn't mean you can just mail it in and go with a bunch of fifth rounders. No, they got Amari Cooper. Let's not forget that. He may not be a superstar wide receiver, but ultimately, the Browns have a lot of faith that Watson can elevate this wide receiver room and make him very competitive. My final rookie to watch, the number one guy, it's Perrion Winfrey. The guy's just, he's already the fan favorite. He was the fourth player, third player taken um, off the Brown. Yeah, fourth player taken after, was it Martin Emerson, Alex Wright, David Bell, and Winfrey. And he's already number one in a lot of people's hearts in Cleveland. The guy was born for the dog pound. You know what I'm saying? It's not often when you draft a player in day three, you can be like, this is going to be a hometown hero. This is going to be a fan favorite. And if I'm wrong, I don't even care because I've just gotten that much energy from Perry on Winfrey and how happy and excited he is to be playing for the Browns who needed him, right? They need a defensive tackle. We talked about drafting him at 44 to get him in the 100s. That was a fantastic pick. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait to see Winfrey play. So let's show the guy some love. We did this, I think, last week. Put his jersey number 97 down in the comment section. Welcome him to the dog pound. Because he's going to be the mayor, the capital, and the president of the dog pound at that defensive tackle spot. I don't know if he's going to walk into rookie minicamp starting on that defensive line. Right now, I've got Elliot and Togiai there. Because let's face it, they were third-round picks, right? Togiai last year only had like one good game against the Patriots, and that game sucked. Haven't really seen much of Elliott from Missouri. But maybe Taven Bryan starts. They signed him, the former first-round pick from Jacksonville. I'll stick with this. This is not what I think the depth chart will be. I think this is just what it is right now for Barry and Stefanski. But there's no reason Winfrey can't steal a starting role by the end of preseason and training camp going into week one. Because both those starting starts spots are wide open. Like I said, I've got Elliott and i got Togiai there temporarily. They're not in pen. They are in pencil. Okay, not even like a pencil you haven't sharpened yet in a little while and you're about to go take your ACT and you're like, let me just get this nice and sharp. No, they're that pre-sharp pencil. They're a soft two, soft number two pencil. That's what they are in the depth chart here. All right, so I, I like the idea of Winfrey blowing people away at rookie minicamp and trying to really take over and get a starting job by the middle of training camp, preseason, you know what I mean? Would not be blown away at all if that were to happen. I want to ask this question, though, before we get out of here on this segment. Who are you most excited to see at Rookie Minicamp? Was it one of the five guys I talked about in the show? Or you want to go somewhere else? You want to go with Alex Wright? I left him off, right, the edge rusher from UAB, because to me, it doesn't seem like he's going to have a big role his rookie season. They just said, hey, you're an awesome physical specimen. Let's get you in here and... Let you grow for a year, maybe two, and then take over after that. So let me know down in the comment section who you are most excited to see at Rookie Minicamp. 